Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Draft Day Sports Pro Basketball 2021 Developer Dynasty here at Wolverine Studios. Uh, we are uh, back and excited to talk uh, some more hoops this week with you guys. We've had uh, some very exciting uh, new additions put in this last week that I can't wait to, to show off tonight and discuss. Um, as always, uh, first I want to thank our subscribers to the channel, uh, whether you're subscribing uh, on your own or through Twitch Prime. Uh, we certainly appreciate that support for our channel and for our efforts here. Uh, you know, we're uh, figuring out ways that we can continue to expand the channel in different and unique ways going forward. Um, the developer dynasties have been, you know, a big hit, and we're going to continue doing those while we're in, you know, development stages of the games. But, uh, you know, we... Uh, we have some other ideas too that we're kind of kicking around and, and working on. So we want to make the, the our Twitch channel here uh, a bigger part of our you know, what we do going forward. So I thank you for subscribing and for all of our followers. We have a few new followers since last week as well. So thank you to those uh, new followers and to all of our followers who uh, you know have uh, have signed up with us here and make sure you you have those notifications enabled so you know when we're going live. Um, you know, I, I've got some, uh, you know, as we said, some exciting stuff this week to uh, to talk about. So we're going to get into it. Uh, Breeze837 in the chat says, can't wait for today. Breeze, good to see you again. And GM Games Chris here in the chat, too, uh, saying hey to everybody. So hey to Chris. Um, if you guys have not checked out uh, GM Games, I always uh, always recommend going over to their site. They do uh, they do great work for, uh, for our genre, and uh, they have guys who are streaming, uh, and Twitch and YouTube and and all that kind of stuff. So definitely want to check those guys out. Um, you know, we we talked about uh, sort of talking about first access coming up pretty soon for Pro Basketball twenty twenty one. While we're on that subject, if you haven't checked out uh, Pro Football twenty twenty one in first access, uh, time is running down to do that. So if you haven't pre ordered. Uh, make sure that you do that pretty soon. With the pre-order, you get immediate access to the beta builds. Uh, you also can get a discount in the web store and also be uh, eligible for a free Steam key for the game when it's uh, eventually launched on Steam. So if you even if you're just you know you just want it on Steam, you can pre-order from us and get a discount and uh, make sure you get your Steam key uh, when we release the game there. Uh, but as for basketball, for first access, um, nothing new to report on that yet. Part of the the issue is in planning and deciding, um, you know, we try to time the pro releases as close to the start of the pro seasons as possible. Uh, and with news on the NBA possibly pushing back uh, their season, uh, kind of our plans for, for pro basketball 2021 are up in the air a little bit right now so no firm uh no firm date yet on the beta uh so uh bus bob 56 you just joined you didn't miss anything no firm dates yet on the beta we're still kind of formulating our plan uh deciding if we're going to go ahead and, and push the beta the first access period out kind of when we intended to or if uh, if we might delay it a little bit to uh to kind of match up more with what the nba apparently is planning for the draft and free agency um, you know, we like to keep those pro releases timely uh, to the seasons, but we'll see. Uh, since there's not a plan, it seems solid for that, you know, for what the NBA is going to do. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do yet, but the game is is in very good shape and getting very close to the point where we can do first access. It's just a matter of uh, sort of deciding when to do it. So uh, as I, I teased on Facebook and Twitter, We've got some interesting new additions uh, this week. One of them driven uh, by uh, GM Games, Chris. Uh, so I, I, I tell you guys every week when we do these chats that the suggestions, you know, are super, super important in terms of, uh, you know, where we take development. Because obviously we have the core of the game developed. There's a great basketball game here. And it's just about adding layers of depth and layers of, you know, interactivity and stuff like that. So uh, when we get great ideas, you know, either presented to us in the chat here or, or privately through private messaging and stuff like that, I want to follow up on them. So we've got uh, we've got one that we're going to get to in just a little bit. But 
one other thing I've added on my own that I've wanted to do for a while is, and this is just, I'm starting to build this in, so I'm going to uh, do a little bit of simming here because uh, with the notifications down in the corner now about uh, games that you win and lose and stuff like that, uh, which you'll be able to see here in a minute, I'm working on adding more notifications in for uh, what I'm calling milestone achievements. Um, you know, significant things that happen in the course of a season uh, that, you know, you should be aware of. So there uh, you can see that there is a, a triple-double made and then a milestone achieved for that player scoring 2,000 points in the season. So things like this that, um, you know, I, I think are really, you know, really useful to a player to kind of get you into that game world. Um, you know, it's always, you know, things you can find in the news and stuff like that. But a lot of times, you know, people don't want to read all of the news and stuff like that. And they just want, um, you know, maybe a quick little thing pushed to them there. So I think these little milestone pop-ups and, um, and things like that where, you know, or a special thing like a triple-double happens. Um, it, they're rare enough where, uh, you know, you're not going to see them every single game, obviously or every single day that you sim. There will be enough triple-doubles, obviously, during the season where you'll see that one fairly frequently. But, you know, seeing something like a guy scored 2,000 points on the season, there's only going to be so many players, um, you know, over the course of a season that are going to score 2,000 points in a season. So that's going to be something rare and special when it pops up. Um, I'm also going to expand on that a little bit further and try to take it into, like, a career tracking as well so that we can track um you know when players get close to big milestones like 10,000 points in their career or something like that um you know so it, it's it's really just kind of the, the start of the idea here and what we can do with that but it's something I was excited to show off because um you know I just think that it's it's really gonna bring a lot to you know to the league when you play in it and you see these things happen and you'll realize, wow, you know, something special just happened that, you know, that player just, uh, you know, did something really, really cool or really unusual or really unique or something, you know, somewhat rare um, that otherwise you just wouldn't, you wouldn't notice maybe if you were just simming away. So, uh, so right now it's in there for, uh, season-long milestones. I'm working on being able to develop it for career milestones, and I'm going to add in somewhere, um, somewhere on one of the screens, a milestone tracker as well, so that uh, you can see who's getting close to certain milestones. Um, I don't know if it's going to be maybe in the almanac or something like that. Uh, that might be a place for it. Possibly in the league media. Um, the Almanac, I thought, kind of made sense because it has the, the player records in here. Um, you know, you can see, uh, you know, things like this. Obviously, I think Darren Jackson was the guy in the, the sim there who had 2,000 points. So he's had a couple of really big games in the sim here. Um, but, you know, this page would be possible for the uh, the milestone tracking. Otherwise, maybe it'll end up in the, the media page. I guess I'll have to see, uh, you know, kind of how I feel about it. But, um, you know, I, I just, I, I think that's going to be a really fun addition going forward. And uh, and it's going to give you something that, uh, you know, that you haven't had, you know, before on the games. Uh, let's, uh, we've got a couple of things in the chat. Narlins loves what we're doing here. Uh, so does GM Chris and GB Moore. Breeze837, is there a thing where we can use overall numbers instead of stars? Is there a draft history for draft classes? There is draft history. It's, it, I'll go back to the almanac here. Uh, there's a button up here. This league, I haven't simmed any drafts. But once you do, you'll be able to uh, set up here and select a year, and it'll have all the history for all the drafts that you've done. Um, overall numbers instead of stars. Uh, I don't, I don't have that option. I, I kind of prefer the overall, the star because I, I don't want it to be so concrete because I, I think that when, 
when we have an overall number, you know, uh, player people tend to look at it um, and say, "Oh, he's an you know he's a 92, so he's better than an 89." Where they both you know they both might be a four and a half star player or something like that. Um, so I think that if you have the the star system, it kind of lumps guys into different groups and tiers. That's pretty good. That's what I'm going for, as opposed to saying, "Well, this guy, you know." feeling like one should outperform the other because of a few overall points difference when it really the overall doesn't really matter in, in terms of the game it's just kind of a, a a look at how you know uh kind of how the public would kind of view that guy so you know when you're talking about five star guys you know you can argue who who's the best is it Giannis? is it lebron is it you know whoever you want to say in that category, rather than saying this one's better than the other one, I like it better where we can lump them into different tiers and categories and um, and say, okay, these guys are this level tier, uh, you know, and then there's a the next tier down sort of thing. Uh, while I have the player card pulled up, if anybody hasn't been in the streams in a while, uh, what you're looking at here, the, these little icons here, the player types, that's something that's new here. Uh, to kind of kind of give you a quick glance at some of the guys who you know have special uh, you know special abilities or special you know uh, special things that are, are ratings that, that make up a unique type of player so you know this uh, you know there's a sharp shooter here and the attacker for a guy who likes to drive a lot uh, the bucket getter uh, playmaker you know sharp shooter again so those are pretty self-explanatory there's eight different ones in the game that we've added in uh, for guys in the paint, defenders, um, rebounders, guys who are great uh, ball handlers, stuff like that. So I think uh, I think that'll be a new, a fun new thing too in the game this year if you haven't already seen it in one of our prior streams. Uh, that'll be something to look forward to. Uh, GM Games Chris, at some point, should the po the potential just degrade below their overall if they are old? That's exactly what happens, Chris. At um, at some point, there's a, a specific time in the game where, um, again, this this overall potential is meant to be kind of like a a global view of the players. So there there comes a time in, in the game where those change, and the 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 overall potential then will match up once there's been enough time in the game for people to say, okay, this player, you know, we, we've really seen enough of him. We've seen a few years of him. He's not going to ever be a, a four-star guy. He's really just a two-and-a-half-star guy. That's all he's ever. That's all he ever is going to be. And then it will adjust the potential down, and they'll, they'll kind of be at a point where it just accepts who he is. Um, so, so that definitely already exists in the game. Um, and, and yeah, right. In college basketball, it doesn't have, um, it, it doesn't have the uh, the same thing because they they're not ever going past the point of where their ceiling is. So it, it works differently in college basketball. Uh, New Orleans thirty four. Can the opposite happen? Um, there there is, yeah. A two star can go past potential. There there's two different things that work here. There is a boom bust factor in the game. So when you draft a player, he might, you know, he might only show a two and a half star potential or whatever, and he might turn out to be a three and a half star. So that can happen, just the same as a, a guy who can, you know, be a bust and, you know, maybe he was a four star potential and he only turned out to be a two star player. So that's one thing. And then what I was kind of talking about with uh, with Chris is that there's a point where the guy looks like he still, you know, could be, you know, maybe he went from a two and a half to a three two and a three and a half and he says he's a four star potential but there's a point in the game where it says okay he's he's done developing he's just not going to quite get there so he's not really a bust but he just made it only 80 percent of the way or whatever into his development so then it will adjust at that point uh so i'm going to pull up uh and those are all great questions i, I really appreciate those questions i'm going to pull up a, a 2d game here to talk about something that uh, hopefully will happen during the game. Uh, that uh, let's see, we had uh, like that Chris was uh, really talking to me about and working with uh, 
with me on suggestion wise. So one thing that we're trying to do with the, the 2D gameplay here is make the presentation better for you. Um, it's, it's already a good presentation. I think, I think the screen is very attractive. It does a nice job with colors and, and logos and information. Um, you know, if you're new to the 21 version here that we're, that we're talking about, you can see, uh, uh, you know, this, this recent play, uh, section on the bottom here where we've kind of add this, just, just sort of the, the big play. If you, if you prefer the, uh, the play by play log, you can always click back to that and have the play by play log if you want the whole thing as been in the past. But I kind of like this recent play thing because you get the play by play above here that, uh, that you can check out. And, uh, and then you get the recent plays underneath, which, you know, if people watch, um, you know, maybe different things on their phone or whatever that are online, the game cast, stuff like that. Um, you, you kind of see more in that format. Um, so, so that's something that's new, but you know, something else that we're working on is we're trying to get, um, some different presentation options up here. And obviously this big empty space up here on the left and right, um, would be where if you're coaching the game, you have options there. So that's typically not empty if you're playing uh, with your team, because you see, um, uh, all of your in-game adjustments and stuff like that, that go up there. Um, but what we're looking to do is add a couple of extra, um, I guess you could say pop-up things that will happen, uh, during the game for kind of more significant in-game or in-season events. So I chose Charlotte because they have, uh, uh, that Jackson in this, uh, in this sim, who is a really good score. I'm going to try to move this along so we can see if, if one of them will pop up. Uh, but hopefully we can get this to, to pop up here and, and show you kind of what we're talking about. Uh, and while I'm doing that, I'll get a couple of things from the chat box. Uh, let's see, Breeze837, is there a halftime report? There is a halftime report. Um, you can turn it on or off. I can uh, pull up options there. So there is an option to show the halftime report. I'm going to turn that off because I don't want to show it right now. I just want to uh, simulate this a little bit and hopefully something good will happen. Uh, you'll see the, uh, that white box that will pop up over the course of the game. Um, you know, that replaces the drop down that was in 2020 that, I mean, I, I like the effect, but I think it, it slowed things down. So obviously I've got it at a fast speed here. So that's why it keeps pushing so many notifications up there because the game's moving really quickly and I wouldn't play it at this quick of a speed. But um, it's getting there. Uh, I'll slow it down for just a second here. Uh, and you can also see that uh, uh, Charlotte apparently plays no deep. <laughs> so they've given up 42 points in this quarter. That's an amazing shooting. Um, there is the, uh, it, it, again, new to this series, if you're, you see this fast forward button, uh, no longer will you jam this speed thing all the way to the end uh, and have uh, things and you, you'll see a pop up uh, right there. I'm working on this in process where Nick Ledbetter just came up there in the, the bottom right corner. Uh, so th that'll show up when something um, important happens in the course of the game. So in, in that case, um, I think he made it he must have made it over the 20 point mark. And so it will it will pop up his picture down there and show um, I still have to work on the notification a little bit, but it will show a notification that he's had uh, 20 points in the game or that he's had, you know, this is his 10th 20 point game of the season, stuff like that. So it's it's going to push, um, you know, things like that up on the screen for you while the game is going on. So I don't know if you've caught, I'll try to kind of sim ahead a little bit faster here and we can get some of the, the starters back in the game and then hopefully something good will happen. But that's, uh, it was kind of brought up to me by Chris, uh, you know, to see what else we can do to improve the, 
kind of the presentation to make it more like you're watching it, you know, on TV and stuff like that. So, you know, we've got this, you know, the, the notification here of kind of everything that happens after a play, you know, whoever made the, the shot or the rebound or whatever, you're getting an update on how they're doing. And then when something significant happens uh, over the course of the game, we're going to work on having that little pop up in the in the corner over there. It'll replace the stat box temporarily and it will uh it, it will kind of give you some information about uh that kind of you know that player so whoever it was um you know that did something cool or did something you know special for that game hit a milestone and, and again just going to be individual milestones like 20 points 30 points uh stuff like that i'm working on adding more to it but at, at uh at this point that's what uh that's what it is right now We'll slow the speed down a little bit and see if uh, if anything happens here with Stevens or Jackson. Um, and while we're doing that, Chris, uh, if the shot was a three-pointer, it'll be the three-point field goal. So, yeah, um, the information box will try to update different things. Though. So you don't always see the same information on the screen. Um, you'll see some different, uh, different things, whether it's points or three-pointers or assists or you know, what they've shot from the free throw line, something like that. So it's, it's really an effort to make, uh, you know, make the presentation interesting and unique and kind of give you, uh, you know, sort of like, you know, watching, watching the game on TV. So it's, you know, it's all about making the, the presentation the best that it can possibly be. Um, let's see. Uh, I saw uh, Norland's mentioned about injuries announced in recent play. I don't think I put injuries in there. It will announce that there's an injury though, so I, I might have to take a look at that and see um, see if I can do something to to post the injury in the recent play. Uh, that's a good uh, that's a good thought. So let me uh, let me make a note of that here. And if you guys have ideas. Uh, for the presentation, things that you'd like to see uh, come up during the course of the game or, or anything uh, like that, uh, you know, by all means, let me, you know, let me know. And that's, like I said, this this sort of idea came from Chris and, um, you know, just it's just sort of talking to each other and, and seeing, you know, what he was interested in seeing happen and, and how could I make it happen. So that that's, you know, it, it's a big thing if you just... Uh, you know, just give me the suggestion, and if it's something I can work with and, and move along with, I'll do it. Um, and then Chris mentions that he played the. I prefer the play being the trigger rather than randomization. It is the it is the the play itself is the trigger for it. So like, if they make a three pointer, it's not going to show you what they're shooting from the free throw line. But sometimes it may, uh, and you'll see another one. I the uh, notification itself isn't popping up right now, but that uh. You know these guys, their uh, their pictures is coming up, which is is part of what is working here. Um, but the the notification is based on what triggered it, and then it might give you an additional extra you know tidbit like on that one. You see he has twenty three points, nine for fifteen field goals, and one steal. So the steal didn't really have anything to do with anything, but it just kind of throws that in there as an extra tidbit. But I, I saw the pictures pop up there. Um, so that's really what I wanted to uh, to demonstrate is is kind of the idea that will happen with the pictures popping up there. There will be text, um, as always. This is uh, you know a work in process and beta, so I'm sure there's some reason why the text isn't popping up there correctly. I may have made it too long, so it's not able to properly fit in the box there or something like that. But um, but that's the idea there. So that's that's what we're working on there. So you've got the the uh, season milestones here that are being built into the sim and we've also got the and i'll if, you, if you're late to this sim here i'll pull that up so you can see uh what we're talking about during the sim seeing some of these milestones come up um you know we'll pull that up and then uh we'll just sim to the end of the season here so you can see some of those and see some of the other notifications but um th those are the two big things kind of that i've been working on this week is just uh, just these enhancements that will make, uh, you know, make the game 
come alive to you. I really want the focus to be building this game world that you feel that you are like engrossed in, that these players, uh, these players are real to you. So that you, when you see, um, you know, you see these news things, you see the milestones that they're achieving. Uh, it hits home to you that this guy is a special player. He did something special. And then even in the course of the 2D, uh, the 2D games, having the player pop-ups that only happen, you know, they're only going to happen a few times a game, if that, uh, because it's going to be for unique situations. Um, so it's not just going to be a constant thing. It's going to be, you know, a, a special thing that doesn't happen that often, but often enough where um, when it happens, you'll notice it. And, you know, hopefully you think, hey, that's cool that that came up and, and kind of reminded me of or kind of pointed out something important that happened. Uh, so if, if you have, you know, things along these lines that you want to see added, and, and I'm talking um, whether it's, you know, notifications like that with the milestones that I put in or the, the extra stuff happening during the, the 2D play, um, whether it's uh, different charts and graphs and things like that. You know, I, I kind of go to the chart page every so often, the, what we call the insights tab. Um, I'm going to stop this thing and go over there just because I like to check it out. Uh, you know, there's so many things we can do tracking wise. And this is something new here. I'll put in, I'll pull up the four factors uh, in terms of a team versus team look. This is a new uh, chart that I've added into the game this season. So uh, you've got your offensive effective field goal percentage, the turnover percentage, the offensive rebound percentage, and the free throw rate, and then the defensive ones as well. So you can see where your team is stacking up in all these areas of the what they call the four factors so um you know anything along these lines if you have things like this um charts you know all these bubble charts i think are a lot of fun uh and they're you know i think they're useful this is salary versus their per rating um, obviously you want to have a, a player like joel holtz here who uh, has a very good per and a very low salary uh, so you, you know you can check that out and then do it based on the entire league as well, where you can see, you know, your players are in colored dots here while the rest of the league is in gray. So you can see kind of where you got have important guys who stack up. But any of these type of things, I mean, if you have charts that you've seen on some other website or you have a certain metric that you really like to see yourself, you know, let me know because we can do I mean, so many cool things with this platform that uh, that it's, you know, just you all you have to do is, is give me the idea and we can find a way, you know, to make it happen through here because there's so much data that's stored and, you know, so many great ways to display it now on this platform. Uh, let's see a couple of questions in the uh, chat box before we wrap up here. Uh, Breeze, what are the chances of an undrafted player being a steal as in an undrafted all-star um undrafted all-star i would say not very likely at all uh, there is the uh, rare occurrence where a player could be a second round pick and turn into an all-star um, again that is rare uh you know and i've had we've talked about this on prior streams where people have said that it doesn't happen you know very often or something like that uh, players like you know ginobili draymond green uh, you know, they're not in every draft. It, Michael Red, stuff like that. I mean, we're talking about going way back now, you know, for kind of the, the second round picks that were all star players. It's just, it's not in every draft. So it does happen, but I, I think it happens at an expected and reasonable amount in the drafts. Um, uh, GM Games, Chris, is there a tracking area for each offense that is being run with their stat breakdown? Uh, that is not tracked. It is not tracked by, um, I'll go to the strategy page so you can kind of look at the different offensive strategies. It's not tracked by that because the teams don't switch back and forth. It's not like the, the college game where, um, and maybe that's something that I should track in the college game, or, you know, see how many, uh, you know, how many points you score running flex versus what you score running motion, stuff like that. This is more of a philosophy type thing. Um, which will drive how your team plays overall. So it's it's there's some there's some s s large differences between 
the offensive and defensive strategies in the pro and college game. Uh, so I, I don't think I'd want to track it by um, track that in the pro game because you're not switching between them during the game, really. It's kind of your philosophy overall for building the team. Um, let's see. Uh, and Bree says, uh, will there be an all-time greats leader during a 2D game? Uh, right now, the 2D game is that's uh, it's only doing it's only set up to track individual uh, accomplishments right now. But again, this is just the start. I mean, this was something that Chris talked to me about during this week, uh, just as an idea he had, and, and I said, okay, let's let's start with your idea and, and run with it see where we go so you know that's just the start and the 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 milestones that i'm talking about on a single season basis is just the start i'm i have um already started the work for the career type milestones uh you know that i talked about earlier in the stream so that you know if a player hits ten thousand points or something you'll see that milestone pop up and say you know whatever he's he's hit ten thousand points um, so, so I will expand that to the career. I'll see about pulling that data in for the individual 2d games as well. Uh, but I mean, that, that's a good, uh, that's a good suggestion as well. So, uh, we've got, uh, we've had our 30 minutes already very quickly. It always goes so quickly, uh, during these streams. It, it just, I, I, I really like talking about kind of some of these small details and, uh, in, in what we're kind of expanding the game to do you know during these streams so you know I, I really like this platform of twitch to do that because it's it's so much better i think to do it visually and to get the feedback as we go i mean it was i really i really liked the initial reactions just as people saw early in the stream today the milestones start popping up during the sim um you know because it's it's unexpected they, you know it's not something that's part of the game uh, prior to this and it's not something that it's you know we, we've been talking about or anything like that so um, I, I like to reveal you know these these things and I think all these little things add up to something big for the game and in 2021 version here you know that's really what the focus has been has been you know improvement by you know a thousand small things um, you know there's a couple of you know bigger overall concepts as well but I really think that the improvement in the, the small things, just, um, you know, like those milestone pop-ups, like the pop-ups that say, uh, you know, somebody had a triple-double, something like that. I think that, you know, those type of things really, um, really enhance what we're doing with the game here and really help you feel more connected to the game world. So if you have any ideas that you feel would improve even on those, um, please hit me up here email, uh, fill out our support form, catch me on Slack, anything that, uh, any way you can get that idea to me so that you can see, you know, we can, we can talk about it. We can, you know, flesh out your idea. And if it's possible, I'll build it in. So I want to thank everybody for coming to the stream tonight. I hope that, uh, that you're as excited about some of these additions as I am. Um, you know, again, thank you to everybody who follows us. If you're new to the stream and you haven't followed us, please hit that follow button and uh, make sure you have the notifications turned on so that you know when we're always going live. And thank you, as always, to our subscribers who, you know, we really, really appreciate your support uh, to our channel and to our endeavor here. Uh, that'll do it for this week on Draft Day Sports Pro Basketball 2021. I look forward to uh, another great week of talking to everybody and getting some more great suggestions and another great week of, uh, of improvements and works and fun things to show off next week. So I'll see you next Tuesday right here at 730 on our Twitch channel. Everybody have a great week, and uh, let's keep those great suggestions coming in. Thanks, everybody.